KL for cancer as well, and the Duke Blue Devils in their white uniforms with the pink trim. We'll have more on Kay Yao and her incredible legacy throughout this game. But we are underway. The U in town to take on Duke. And really, I feel like both of these teams deserve the limelight. They have earned it. Absolutely. I mean, they both play their hearts out. And both these teams, big rebounding squad. So I expect to track me here today, Dino. Coming off that monster game, Haley Cavender. Look at that high pressure from Taylor. That could create some openings down low. Brown was late for covering. Pandande a 71%. Miami has long had a little mixture of international talent. And the rebound for Brown. De Jesus. We thought it was going to be Cheyenne Day Wilson, but De Jesus gets the start. One thing, though, about Kara Lawson's team, as we talked about before the game, Tabitha Turner, she doesn't care who starts. She truly does not care. That's right, and she shouldn't. It's whoever goes out there and plays hard as Richardson knocks down. A long three from beyond the arc. So the first three points of the game go to Richardson. Tremendous pickup to have. Haley and Hannah Cavender, the two transfers, they will still have eligibility left next year. They are so big, though, in NIL and in the social media influencer scene. They're like mini Tabitha Turners <laughs> that they may not come back next year. We'll see. There's a bucket underneath Balagoon and Brown, and it didn't take long for Kara Lawson to make a change and bring Heidi in as Brown got hit early with a foul. That's Duke's lineup brought to you by Toyota. And another bucket for Richardson, feeling it early. I mean, Reagan Richardson has just added some nice scoring for Duke as well as her defense as well. Here's Katie Myers' lineup brought to you by Toyota. As you see, Harden joining Cavender and Roberts. And of course, Destiny Harden at six feet tall. I love the work she does around the board. She is a monster around the boards at only six feet tall. I mean, she is a huge rebounding guard. Her and Roberts both, and they just get after it on the boards. And Destiny, she can also shoot it from beyond the arc. And guess what, Dino? The last time this Miami team saw this Duke team, they beat them in the ACC tournament. Guess who hit the buzzer beater? Destiny Harden, so she definitely can light it up and get after it versus Duke. Great rebound there and a block by Heidi, so the Jesus will push. Cavender, who was so great in the last game, missing that little runner right there. As Miami now one for three, Duke two for three from the field, Duke with a two point lead. The Jesus, Taylor, yes. Taylor was wide open, but it was. The ball handlers drawing in two defenders and then passing it and getting it to Taylor, who was wide open. It's ball motion that got her open. Duke, with that win over Boston College, their 1,000th win in program history. That's a lot. Here's Taylor. Balagoon now with her third team in the ACC. Not quite on the same page right there. Yeah, Taylor and Balogun having words for each other. Taylor expected Balogun to run to the rim, to rim roll for the easy two. Look at this pressure. It's worth pointing out, Duke has held opponents to single digits in a quarter 25 times as they get another rebound. Miami sitting on three. I know we've got a lot of time left, but Duke is stifling. They're disruptive. As De Jesus runs into trouble, drops it to Heidi, and Heidi will go to the line. Backboards in the rim, and for Duke, it's ball security. Miami's also number three in the ACC in steals, and be aware in that area so that they don't have those live ball turnovers that turn into points at the other end for Miami. Heidi hits the second of two. When Balagoon can hit an early three, that really gets her going. Balagoon's one of those players, she can score 33 or she can score three, depending on the day, as it'll go out of bounds. Turn it pink, play for K, and it's loud here on a Sunday afternoon at Cameron with Duke leading out of the timeout. Miami will go to the free throw line. First one. Dino, she was the 1986 ACC Rookie of the Year, so she could really hoop. I wonder if the Miami players and even the Duke players know who Katie Meyer is and what she's done on this court. I hope they do. She's one of the all-time greats, not just for Duke, but 
for the ACC. Of course, we all know the great history of Kara Lawson at Tennessee with USA and then also with the Boston Celtics. Here's Balogun, takes a big step, had an opening as Day Wilson is in. Balogun, tough shot, makes it. Nice job by Balogun. Miami just one for six. Watch Duke work that shot clock, create tough shots, get the rebound. Day Wilson can take it all the way. Cuts it back in. Day Wilson does take it all the way and count it. Day Wilson with a smile on her face. She didn't get the start. 150 remaining in the first 13 to 5. And a good leaner there by Cavender. And that's a good job by Cavender. She didn't have the open three, so she used the screen, then the re-screen, and was able to drive into the paint. About 14 seconds difference between the shot clock and the end of the first quarter here. A six-point lead. Heidi. In. Nice job by Heidi. She realized she had the one-on-one -on -one over Spearman and just did a nice little hook shot to the interior over the taller defender. And they're about the same height. Final seconds here in the first quarter. An eight-point lead for Duke. No easy shots off the front of the rim. And after one, it's Duke 15, Miami 7. Duke just really set. Duke's held every opponent this season under their scoring average. It's really impressive. If you look at their numbers from last season, the jump is incredible. Dane Wilson misses six consecutive quarters. Duke has actually held the opposition to single-digit points. Good pass down low, but nowhere to go. Nice defensive work by Duke. There was Corsdale off the bench. As you need to keep your head on a swivel to keep your eye on who Duke is running out there. Kennedy Brown back in there. Kennedy Brown back it in with a goal. Yeah, Brown just took her time. It was two different defenders down there. Brown laid it over both in the paint. So first bucket for Brown, and the lead is 10. Good fake on Forsdale and a nice finish by Hannah Cavender. Yeah, Hannah Cavender just really extended that pump fake. Jordan Oliver, Balagoo, great pass to Brown, up and in. Again, the double team came and Brown did a nice job of just taking her time and finding the open man. Realize that both defenders had come to her. Good pass by Balagoon to find her. Great pass. And after starting three for four, that bucket made right there has Duke making five of their last 15. So give Miami a little bit credit defensively as well, but Miami's still just sitting on nine. Shot clock, under 10 again. Deep three, in and out. Rebound Duke. Only one gray jersey, one Miami jersey down there rebounding, three white jerseys. Long shots, long rebounds. People have to get in there, box out, and try to get that offensive rebound to extend the possession for Miami. De Jesus, who earned the start, out there with Balagoon and Brown. Way downtown, back of the rim, rebound Miami. It's both teams a little bit cold right now. The lead's still 10. Pendonde. Nice decision by Pendonde. De Jesus waits for the Balagoon cut. She's trying to post up. They got her pretty deep. Extra pass. Tough shot for Brown, but she makes it look easy. Both Cavenders out there. Back of the rim there for Haley Cavender. Coming off that career-high 33-point performance. Cavender is a much better shooter when she's set as Reagan Richardson forces Miami's Katie Meyer to call a timeout. Knocks that one down right in front of the Miami bench. First foul on Balagoon as Miami breaks the press. Nice shot creating her own shot right there for Roberts. Roberts. She definitely wanted to keep the turnovers low for Duke, and they have done that. They only have two. I mean, they're capitalizing, however, off of the seven turnovers versus Miami. So off of seven Miami turnovers, Duke scoring six points off those turnovers. It is loud here in Cameron Indoor. They realize what is happening with Kara Lawson and this Duke women's basketball team. Number one in the ACC. The kick out and 
and another travel. Turnover number eight against Miami. Angelia Williams doesn't like that, but man, oh man. One of the biggest stats in the game, men or women, is points off turnovers. Duke with eight, Miami zero. And that's part of the reason it's 25-13 in favor of Duke. Taylor. But man, oh man, she can play at a high level on both ends of the floor, but she is disruptive defensively. And look at her, she's not giving any light to the Cavender sisters. Taylor's got five, another miss for Miami, as Miami now five for 18 from the floor. We're under two minutes remaining in the first half. Duke looking to make it seven consecutive quarters where they've held the opposition to under double digit points. And it's the defense for me, but the defense leads to the offense. Right here, Celeste Taylor. Cavender overplays it, so she just attacks the top foot, beats her with the dribble, one dribble pull up. Inbounds play, Taylor open. Ripped out of there by Odeaker. You can see the two Cavender sisters often look for each other. Good job by Duke recognizing that. Odeaker, decent move underneath of being over the back call, going against Pendonde. That's the 15th foul, and that'll put Balagoon to the line for the Duke Blue Devils. Balagoon hits the first and 50% from the field. Shot clock already approaching 10 seconds. This tenacious, stifling D from the Duke Blue Devils. Balagoon sliding her feet, Balagoon. And it goes off of Balagoon, but the shot clock sitting at four points set. At just 50 points a game, and that's the reason why they're also atop the ACC at number one. They were not aware of the shot clock right there, thus had to force it. So now Duke can hold for the last shot as they've held Miami to 13 points. 29 to 13. Day Wilson. Day Wilson, step back. Day Wilson for three. 32 to 13 at the half. And Miami a season low in points at the half. I think Kara Lawson didn't start Day Wilson just to piss her off a bit so she could come back and do a bit of that. Looking good. If Florida State was any indication, they came back and were on a 9-0 run in that third quarter. Let's see what they do here. To Jesus runner off the back of the rim, then the front and out. So a rebound for Miami. Miami again in the gray. There's Harden. Harden had those two fouls unlucky in and out. To Jesus getting the start. Harden does have those two fouls. Taylor, contested shot. So rebound, Miami, Roberts. Look how quick DeJesus just recovered and transitioned. Didn't allow Miami to get anything easy. Williams was thinking about a three, but Taylor can close out as fast as any player in the game. In my opinion, the best two-way player in the ACC. Just such a high level, both on the offensive and defensive end, how she plays. A whistle down low. But we know what foul trouble can do. Saw Destiny Harden have limited minutes in that first half, so maybe Miami trying to give Duke a little bit of their own medicine. Shot clock at 17. Miami, the lowest points in the first quarter, lowest points in the half. What was Katie Myers' message as you see that up and in? What did she say to her team? Nice job by Pendande uh, splitting the defense, but one, she's saying take care of the ball. Ten points off of eight turnovers, well, that's too much. To Jesus. Did not have the baseline. Heidi! Nice shot. Smart. Heidi recognized that the paint was being crowded and that she had Pendande on her, just elevated and shot over the defender. We've seen Heidi and Brown hit that eight to nine footer all the way to 14 feet in this game. You'd love that out of your bigs. Absolutely, but that's that's why you need stretch fours. Thank you for leading me there. Everyone knows I love stretch fours as Cavender finally knocks down her first attempt from beyond the arc. They're gonna need a whole lot more of that with a score 34 to 18 wide open. Balagoon, Balagoon again, Balagoon. 
Trying to add up rebounds Moses Malone style, but missed two easy ones there. Too soft on the first attempt. She's got to make that one. She'll get another chance here. Had four, three rather, Miami jerseys around. And after missing those two. And don't forget Roberts, Dino. She's got three. Coming off 19 points versus Florida State. I stand corrected. She's got one. That's a typo that I'm looking at. <laughs> Harden, good way to beat the press. They went right and left and back to right, and they finished on the right side. Nice job beating the press. And Jasmine Roberts, doesn't matter how many fouls she got, she got the score right there. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke her up. <laughs> Taylor to Jesus. Taylor buzzes right by. And in. Nice shot. Love that little leaner. Yeah, Taylor just a couple possessions ago. One of those shots a little bit too hard. She adjusted this time around. Took a little bit off. Nice floater. She's got seven. Balagoon's got seven. Richardson's got seven. And Miami got another deep three. Miami going to try to get back in this game long distance style. They've cut the lead to 14. And that's exactly what Roberts needed. That's who you needed to get going in this one. We just mentioned it off of a Florida State game, 19.6 rebounds. So she can really score for this Miami team and they'll need her in this second half if they want to bite into this lead. You can tell, you can tell Miami picking up the tenacity on defense and answered from deep by Richardson. Richardson, the first player to enter double digits, now has 10 points, two of three from beyond the arc for Richardson. That's a little bit of a backbreaker. You see Roberts hit the three. You see the defense tight. You see the shot clock, shot clock winding down. And Richardson hits the three. And Harden may only have zero points in this game, but you just mentioned it, three rebounds. And she's going to give you all she has. A bit of foul trouble in this game. Ripped out of there. Kavner has a rip by one of the best two-way players in the game as Quartered by Tabitha Turner. Really, Kara Lawson backed that up. Taylor up and in. Look at Taylor. Guarding a player that had 33 the game before and keeping a good eye on her. Foul down low as Jordan Oliver is whistled. And that'll be the first on Oliver. For knowing the game plan, following the game plan, and not allowing Miami to get hot from deep. Still looking for her first point. Four for three from the field, four for one. She is now one for two and is on the board. Well, she's had a couple of those shots that she put up bounce in and out. So you know a player like Harden is right there and she can get going at any second. Day Wilson. If you missed the end of the first half, Day Wilson counted it down and hit from Steph Curry range. Taylor. In and out. Heidi, good rebound. Day Wilson, good pass. Balagoon, contact to let him play. And Miami will rip it out. Cavender will push it. Credit the defense for getting a hand in there. As Cavender does a nice move, and she worked for every bit of that one, Dino. Yeah, that's kind of a four-point swing, I would say. But you expect them not to get sloppy either, and so does Kara Lawson. That's what's so impressive about this squad. She mentioned it versus Boston College. She put in new players, and no one got sloppy. Dane Wilson, perfect pass. Unlucky there for Heidi. Cannot ask for a better pass. Shots on both ends of the floor for both teams just rimming in and out Woo! as Cavender. Way downtown from Haley Cavender. I mean, maybe even deeper than the Day Wilson shot to end the first half. Brown has those three fouls underneath. Good hands. And Corsdale somehow hanging on to it. Richardson, yes! You got to know where Richardson is on the floor at all times. She's been the hot hand for Duke. Their only double-digit score now has 12. 12 because she was a foot or so inside the three-point line. 44-29. Shot clock is off. The Cavenders are hanging all over on the left side, and so Harden's got to force one back of the rim. Good defense on the two Cavenders sisters. And through three, it's Duke 44, Miami 29. And we mentioned it, that Miami first half 
was the lowest first half of the season. The first quarter, the lowest of the season. So credit Duke's defense. Number two in the nation in scoring defense, only allowing 50 points a game. Both Cavenders out there to start the third for Katie Meyer. Roberts with another deep three. And in our pregame meeting, Kara Lawson could not have been more crystal clear about the fact she wanted under double digit turnovers and pours in with some range from deep. Again, ball movement. They, round, they rounded the ball beyond the arc, not once but twice. And what does that do when you do that? You break down the defense, it's harder for people to recover in their rotation. Driving to the basket, Roberts using her body up and in. Man, Jasmine Roberts, she's gotten the last nine starts. Katie Meyer knew she had to keep this player in the starting rotation, and we're seeing why in this fourth quarter. Save there by Taylor. Roberts had a new career high in field goals made against Clemson. Here's Day Wilson. Richardson. Wow, great pass. He gets it to the great thing. Cavender twins are out there. Balagoon. I love Balagoon's defense. Just enough to throw up that shot. Good rebound underneath. Brown had to be careful because she had those three fouls. So Duke answers. And Miami answers. I apologize. Bo Schaefer, who has brought some energy. Man, Spearman has definitely brought the game for Miami. She wanted that ball. She posted up, was open. Cavender missed her. She got her own rebound on the block. Taylor really deep, unlucky in and out. Another rebound Spearman. from Spearman, yeah. She's got 10 rebounds. They did a great job, Tabitha Turner, pointing out the effort of Spearman. They needed it, Miami did. It's 49-36. So three again can cut it to 10. Roberts forced it, but gets bailed out there. Basketball is a game of adjustments, right? But it's almost like Spearman and Jasmine Roberts actually, I don't know, maybe kind of waited a little bit too late to get going for Miami. They needed this energy to start the third. They needed this energy in the second and in the first quarter. Well, that's a good point. High screen coming from Spearman. That creates a little bit of space, an acrobatic shot. Spearman there, but it did not hit the rim again, so a shot clock violation. There's been a lot of talk about whether Duke plays ugly or not. For me, disruptive D is not ugly. They play disruptive D. Absolutely. I mean, this is the ACC. A lot of games are going to be ugly because of the style of defense that's played. This is a high-paced game. Kind of unselfish play as Dave Wilson had a layup on either side of the rim. Instead, made the extra pass to Jordan Oliver. Unlucky on her shot. Step back from Roberts. Tremendous defense from Balogun. And Balogun got a hand in there. Stripped it. Yeah, you, you can't decide to deal with Balogun off a high screen because, as we've said so many times, she can handle anybody. And it's not even so much that Duke plays ugly. They make you play ugly mm. is what That's people said. mean to say. Because this Duke offense, man, they're going to get out there and compete. When you play 10 deep, you're not going to go up there and just jack up anything. Celeste Taylor, excellent. Balogun, excellent. Day Wilson didn't get the start today. But you saw what she came in and did when she did get her opportunity. You're going to play hard. You have to play hard if you're on this Blue Devil team. Catmaners out there, along with Harden. You got the ball right now is Dwyer. Go ahead. You got to get Destiny Harden the ball when she's one on one on Balogun. That's an excellent matchup one on one. There's foul on Richardson. We see Cavender. Cavender's together 12. Haley with 10 of them. Brown's got those three fouls. Gets her hands in there. Gets the block. The defense. Pendante rolled right into the block. Dave Wilson took the outlet from Richardson, now Taylor. And you can see Kara Lawson. This is the second possession where Kara has asked her team to pull it back, work a little bit of the remaining two minutes and change. Balagoon. What great hustle by Brown to go out of bounds, rolling back to Miami. 
Duke having their best season since 2012, and they're under two minutes away from moving to ACC victory number 12 and overall victory number 22. Cavender to Cavender. They both dribble into trouble. That's a pretty good pass to Harden. And Harden is fouled. That'll be four on Brown. Yeah, Harden hit the deck hard. She had only hit two shots in that first half. Harden makes the first. No field goals since 727. And I don't think Coach Lawson is gonna, you know, is really too worried about that. She's more worried about how you execute, finding the right players. There were a couple of those shots that kind of rimmed in and out. And we have 60 seconds remaining in this game, an 11 point lead. Miami had several times to cut into that lead and make it single digits in the final three or four minutes, but Duke's defense remains on lockdown while they try to burn some of the clock here. Shot clock at four, looking for Heidi, and ripped out of there. A little bit of a turnover, just kind of protecting that shot clock. Extra pass, up and in a foul. So that Miami didn't have an easy two-win transition, and we said it before, that's how Miami likes to score, where they get a lot of their quick buckets from as Pindande knocks down the first free throw. Pep band here, make it nine. Miami's big win over Florida State. Did you have that game? I didn't, I didn't. Okay. 86-82. And Roberts fouls Taylor. And Dino, don't blink just yet. It's 27 and a half seconds left, but Miami has really bitten to this lead. Got it down to single digits. But what that does is possibly ices free throw shooters, but then also gives you an opportunity to rebound the ball, stop the clock, and bite into the lead. Trying to make it a four possession game by making that one she does. It's just so full circle, and it's such a tight-knit community. I love how all the players and coaches can come back to each other and just rely and depend on one another to get through this life. And it's, it's a really tough life sometimes, so nice to have people there for you. Harden turns it over. Now Katie Meyer is saying no more fouling. They wave it off, so Duke will move to 22-3. 12 and 2 in the ACC, number one all alone. Kara Lawson with the handshake for Katie Meyer. And how about the Duke Blue Devils? I'll say it again 12 and 2 in the ACC.